Hello and welcome to part three of chapter seven. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is multiplying, dividing, and then finding powers of powers with exponents. So this kind of covers the next three sections of our book. All right, so we're going to dive right into our problems. Oh, and if you're listening to, you're trying to listen to for some shout outs, those are coming. You're just going to have to be a little bit more patient. Well, looking at this first problem, if I were to multiply this out, before we learned any kind of rules, we could probably figure this out with logic because 7 to the third power is just 7 times 7 times 7. Then we can figure out that 7 to the fourth power is 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. And since these are parentheses there, that means we're multiplying these two sets of numbers. And I'm not really looking for a number answer here. I would just want to write this in exponent form, and if you count, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sevens. So, we get an answer of seven to the seventh power, because there are seven sets of them. Hmm. Wonder if we could have done that any faster. Well, the answer, of course, is yes. When you're multiplying uh, numbers that have the same base, and of course here we have the same base of 7 and 7, you can keep the base, like we did here, and add the exponent. So 3 plus 4 would have also given us 7, and we don't have to write it out in this long format. So like for instance the second example, now we're dealing with variables, but are the bases the same? I see x and x, so yes, the bases are the same. So we keep the base, add the exponents. We have a 5 and a negative 2. You've got to remember your integer rules. 5 plus negative 2 sounds not the same. We have to subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3. So the answer when we multiply this is x to the third power. Now be careful when you have coefficients because coefficients are separate from their bases. So why don't you guys, why don't you pause for a second and I'll let you guys try. No, nope, you know what? I'm going to do this one. I'll help you out. So let's, looking at this problem, are there any variables that are the same? And I would say yes. See how we have x's here? So when multiplying the x's, we're going to keep the base. So we know that there will be an x in our answer. And we keep the base, add the exponent. So the 5 from this exponent and then two from this exponents get added to give us oops x to the seventh power. So we've taken care of the x's so I can kind of I'm just gonna cross this off know that we've dealt with that. Do we have any other y's? I don't see any other y's so I'm just gonna carry that over. It's just gonna stay y to the sixth. Then all we have left are the numbers and guess what? We were multiplying them. So with these coefficients we're gonna multiply five times three is fifteen times another 3 is 45. So guess what? Now that I've done that one, I'm going to leave the next problem for you. So hit pause right now, try to work out the next problem, and then we'll hit play, and then we'll move on to the next one. I'll show you how to do scientific notation multiplication. All right, hit pause. The answer you should have got was negative 240x squared. So how do we get that? Well, there's one negative times a positive times a positive times a positive. So as far as coefficients go, you can put a 1 in front of that, make it negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 times 12 will give you 48 times 5 will get us 240. So now we've taken care of all these coefficients. So I'm going to cross those off. Okay, And remember, we're just multiplying so we can multiply the coefficients. Now with the bases, I see x, 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 and x, so we keep the base, add the exponent. So 2 plus 3 gives us 5, plus negative 4, back down to 1. There's no exponent here, so you can always add a 1, and 1, 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 4 is 1, plus another 1, gives us x to the second power. So, if we are multiplying... So there's our answer. Just double check if you did not get this one. See if you can figure out how we really did get it. So now if we're trying to evaluate these where we're basically multiplying 
one number in scientific notation times another number in scientific notation, I see that there are two bases that are the same, the tens. So let's, when multiplying, we keep the base, add the exponent. So it's going to be 10 to the 3 plus 6 is 9th power. And then all we have to do is separately multiply our two numbers. 5 times 6 is 30. And essentially we have our answer, except is this written in scientific notation? Remember, the rules for scientific notation, the decimal has to go between the 3 and the 0. So if we are going to do that, this becomes 3.0 times 10. We can't just go around putting decimals between it, change it. So because we have to accommodate for one more extra 0, we're going to make this to the 10th power. All right, so we're moving on to the next section. And this topic is ba can basically be summarized by the word powers to powers. As you can see in our first example, we have x squared taken to the fourth power. So what that actually means is we're going to have x squared written four times. Right, so if we had to evaluate that, wouldn't that make sense? There's one, two, three, four of them because it is to the fourth power. Well, now if we've write, written that out, we can see that the bases are the same, so if we're going to evaluate that in total, base is going to be x. Then, as you can see, we're multiplying, so we keep the base, like we learned in the last section, and add the exponent. So 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 2 is x to the eighth power. Now, do we think there could have been a shortcut? Well, you don't always have to write it out like that, especially if you have really high powers. We can just, when you're taking, the rule is when you take a power to a power, we just multiply. What is 2 times 4? Voila, it is 8. So, let's look at our next example. Can we apply the same thing? In this case, we're going to take this in two parts. Start with just this section. So we have x squared times a negative 2 power. Instead of writing it all out, I'm going to break this in two parts and make it x. And we multiply the exponents. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. That's our first part. Now look at the second part. We have negative 5 and 2. So that's going to be, and since there are parentheses there, we know it's multiplication. So this is going to be x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. All right. Now that we have these two things, we see that the bases are the same, so we're going to carry over the base, and we add the exponents. Negative 4 plus negative 10 is negative 14. One of our rules is we can't leave a negative exponent in our final answer, so we simplify this. Remember, this x to the negative 14th power, negative exponents don't make negative numbers, they make fractions, so it's going to go to the warp zone. Send it down to x or 1 over x to the 14th power. And that is our final answer for that. All right, so one more example here because I want to show you what to do if you have a coefficient, as in the case here, of the 7. Well, if you have a 7 there, we see that x is to the third power. And when you have a power to a power, we keep the base and multiply the exponents. But what is the exponent of the 7? Well, my advice is, if you have coefficients, add the exponent of 1. So we have an imaginary 1 there. Because now what we can do is a little hua, hua. When we're multiplying those exponents, we make sure it gets to all the exponents. So this is now going to become 7 to the 4th power times x to the 3 times 4 is 12. And remember, this 4 times 1 is where we got the 4. 4 times 3 is where we get the 12. Okay, if we wanted to evaluate this 7 to the 4th power, it would be 7 squared is 49. So 49 times 49 times x to the 12th, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. All right, why don't you give a couple of these problems a try. Um, if, you, if you hit pause, I'm going to do one at a time. So I'll do one, put up, do one, I'll put up the answer, see if you got it right, and then I'll give you another chance to pause for the others. All right, good luck. All right, are you back? 
This is what you should have got. Final answer here, x to the 10th over y to the 9th. If you're not sure how we did this, let's take a look. We have a power, 2 a power. So we're going to distribute this 5 by multiplying it by the two exponents. 5 times 2 gave us this 10. 5 times negative 3 gave us negative 15. And power to a power, we're going to multiply y, uh, y to the third power times 2 gives us y to the sixth. Now, so we're left with this. This can be simplified because I see that we have two of the same base, so we keep the base. Add the exponents, 15, negative 15 plus 6 is negative 9. Don't forget your integer rule. Sign's not the same. We subtract it. Sign the bigger number. And x, we weren't doing anything with that, so that kind of just carries over. And like I said, you can't leave negative exponents in your final answer, so goes down here to the uh, denominator x to the 10 stays in the numerator and our answer is done. All right, so I'm gonna give you a second to attempt the next problems done in a very similar way. Take each variable separate. Don't forget about the coefficients. Add in any imaginary uh, exponents of one if you have to. So good luck, hit pause. I'll explain after the pause. All right, so our final answer for this one that you should get is x to the 32 power over 32y to the 26 power. So how do we get that? First step, start by multiplying. Don't forget this 2 has imaginary 1, so I'm going to add that in as an exponent. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Then we work on our second term. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So let's look at what we have alike. Is there any other numbers besides 2 to the negative 5th over here? Nope. So we're just going to carry that over. x and x. We keep the base. Add the exponents. Negative 10 plus 42 gives us 32. Keep the base. y to the negative 20. y to the negative 6 is negative 26th. Okay, so now we just got to handle our negative exponents. So to the negative fifth, uh, negative exponent sends it down to the denominator. And that would be 2 to the positive fifth down here, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which actually equals 32. x to the 32 power, that stays where it is in the numerator. And this y to the negative 24, the negative exponent, y to the 26th power. Alright, so the last one that I'll have you try for this section is 2.0 times 10 to the third. This is the scientific notation. All of that is taken to the third power. So hit pause, decide what you think that answer is going to be. Alright, so what you should have got was 8 times 10 to the negative ninth. How do we get that? Remember, add an imaginary exponent to this 1. And this 3 gets distributed here and here. So this becomes 2.0 times to the third power. So 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then here, keep the base well, and multiply the exponents. 3 times 3 is 9. So that's why we have, we have 8 times 10 to the ninth power. All right, so that's, what we're gonna, that's where we're going to stop for now. Be prepared for a part four of chapter seven. We did two sections in this one part. Oh, but wait, there is a couple things I need to remind you of. These are the shout outs. So we have here, oh, this, this is very nice. It's a shout out to me for being the best teacher ever. I promise I did not write that. And also on this is, and a shout out to Morales and Rosa. So there's your shout out there. But... Uh, we have one more shout out that a student felt was very important. This says, and I'm going to read it what, exactly what it says. It says, attention all students. Morales is my favorite student, so everyone else who thinks they are, you're wrong. Sorry. Again, that was the shout out I was given. So good luck with the problems. Hope you have easy time with the homework. And I will see you in part four.